Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 29th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from New York City, New York. Today we have another guest diary from Jan Kopreva to talk about. This one is about an often neglected and sometimes underestimated web application vulnerability, Open Redirects. OWASP had it as part of its top 10 list in, I think up to 2013. Open Redirects usually happen if a website redirects a user to a different page or site based on an unvalidated URL parameter. So what happens here is that someone can send a victim a link that goes to a page that the victim trusts, but as part of the URL, there is a second URL that's then being used to redirect the victim. One concern with this vulnerability is, of course, phishing. An attacker could craft a link that leads to the page to be phished and have it redirect the victim to the actual phishing page. Of course, in most cases, attackers can get away with simpler phishing attacks. That's why you probably don't uh, see this attack done really that often, even though one thing Jan found is that there are a ton of websites out there that suffer from exactly this vulnerability. And Jan offers some Google dorks to help track down possible vulnerable pages. And yet again, we got Android malware to talk about. This one is a bit more tricky than the one I talked about yesterday. The problem in question is Cam Scanner, an application that allows you to scan documents with your phone's camera and turn them into PDFs. The application itself is essentially legit and works, but like often with free software, the application does earn some money via advertisements, and apparently the author of the application may have gotten a little bit greedy recently. In order to support the advertisement feature, they added actually a known malware downloader, Necro and has been also found pre-installed, this particular malware, in some phones. But in this case, it can then be used, of course, to download and install additional software on the phone that's potentially malicious. Kaspersky has a quick write-up of this malicious component. Why do you think it's malicious? Not all users of the software are necessarily affected by the malware because, uh, well, the software itself just comes with the downloader, not with the actual malware. And it was downloaded about 100 million times from the official Google Play Store. But isn't just Android mobile devices that are getting attacked for mobile devices. The user usually installs the malicious software. Like that's what happened with this PDF application. But Android is also heavily used in TVs and smart TV USB sticks. These devices apparently still often have the Android debug bridge enabled or short ADB. Don't really see this at all on mobile phones uh, anymore. This feature listens on port 5555. And if you're looking at our port scan data, this is a very heavily targeted port. WoodCloud has a write-up of the latest version of malware that is taking advantage of this port. They're calling it Ares. Not really quite clear what's of the purpose of the malware at this point based on the write-up. It just appears to be a bot that's basically just interested in spreading, maybe sort of you know, developing an attack infrastructure to be used later. And more patches today from Cisco. One vulnerability that's being addressed here in particular is actually rated with a CVSS score of 10, the maximum CVSS score. And it's a vulnerability in iOS 
XE. The particular feature uh, that's affected here is virtual services containers. And if you do have the virtual service container for the REST API running, then it's possible that your system suffers then from an authentication bypass that could be used to completely take over the system. Now, when you apply the patch here, you have to be a little bit careful. There's a note here with the advisory from Cisco that states that if the device was already configured with an active vulnerable vulnerable container, the iOS XE software upgrade will deactivate the container. So if you need this REST API container, then you have to re-enable it after you fixed the software with the fixed software release. No workarounds according to Cisco, so you're really left with just, well, bite the bullet and install this update. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.